Amen. Jesus Christ is the way. Having read our scripture lesson this morning from 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 10 through 22, I want to lift up our focal verse, which begins at verse 20. It says, but the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, no, but there shall be a king over us that we also may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us, go out before us and fight our battles. For a few moments, I wanna to preach to you from the sermon title, We Don't Fit In. We don't fit in. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just heard the choir sing that Jesus Christ is the way. And we thank you for the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you for him being our Alpha and Omega, our beginning, our end, and our all in all. So come this morning, Heavenly Father, asking that your Holy Spirit would take control of this moment, the moment where you send your word to your people to accomplish what you needed to accomplish in their lives. And as this servant is here that God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, for you are my rock and you are my redeemer. And it is in Jesus name I pray and say, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We don't fit in. I'm gonna talk to you about peer pressure. We hear a lot about peer pressure and the understanding and definition of peer pressure is defined as this, a feeling that one must do the same things as other people of one's age and social group in order to be liked or respected by them. That's peer pressure, y'all. And we often associate peer pressure just to young people we always telling young people, be mindful of who your friends are. Don't let the peer pressure get to you. Don't let your friends and those people around you make you do negative things, right? We're always telling people, young people, be mindful of peer pressure. Well, I'm here this morning to tell you that any group of any age can be influenced by others and come under peer pressure. You see, the underlying reason people succumb to peer pressure is because they want to be liked and or respected by a certain group. They want to, in other words, fit in. They don't want to seem like they're the odd person out. And sometimes in order to fit in, they would be persuaded by the group they want to fit into to do or partake in behaviors that may not be positive. It's easier, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, it's easier to fit in than to stand out and stand apart, amen? It is easier to fit in. It's easier to go along to get along, amen, than to stand your ground, stand out, and stand apart. In our text this morning, the people of Israel have come under some peer pressure. Samuel, and many of you know Samuel was called as a young, young child. Some believe he was only about three or four years old when he heard the calling of God on his life. Samuel now has been risen up by God to serve as a judge and a prophet for his people. Samuel, who judged Israel and tried to keep the people of Israel in obedience to God. At this point in our text, he's getting old. And Samuel decided that he was going to make his sons judge over Israel. That's a whole nother sermon right there. And unlike Samuel, his sons became corrupt taking bribes from the priests and allowing all kinds of injustices to be done against God's people. So 
the elders of the tribes of Israel, they called a meeting with Samuel and they said, look, you're old and your sons don't walk in your ways. So we want us a king. We want to be judged just like all the other nations around us. See, Israel decided that they no longer wanted to be ruled by the judges that God was appointing over them. Because when they looked around at the other nations around them, these nations were more powerful. They were more powerful than Israel and they had more wealth than Israel and they were being ruled by kings where Israel was being ruled by a judge that God appointed over them. So Israel was being ruled, I want y'all to listen to this, Israel was being ruled by judges who God appointed over them. They were being ruled by judges who heard directly from God and then would lead God's people according to God's will and God's way. But when they looked around them, they saw the big nations like Assyria and Babylon and Persia who were stronger than them and who were more prosperous than them and who were wealthier than them. And they were like, wait a minute, all these nations are doing better than us. And in order for us to be like them, the only difference they saw is that they were being ruled by God appointed judges, but all these other nations were being ruled by kings. Israel was coming under some peer pressure, y'all. These nations were being ruled by kings and the kings appeared to be more powerful. The kings appeared to be stronger. The kings appeared to bring their people wealth. So in other words, Israel attributed the power of these nations to kings, to men, to mortal, and as a new nation, a smaller nation, a nation that just came out of slavery, they wanted to be like all the other nations. Isn't that what prayer pressure is about? That you see another particular group and that group seems to have it all together and they're popular and you want to be part of that group, right? But let me let, let me um take this a little, a little. When so when when Samuel heard this, when, when, they, when they called Samuel, he was, he was disappointed. And Samuel was disappointed because he felt that the people were rejecting him. And then he took it to God. And God said to him, Samuel, they haven't rejected you. They've rejected me. They don't want me, their God, to be king over them. And, you know, he goes on to tell Samuel, you know, they rejected me according and, and despite all the deeds that I have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, they are forsaking me and serving other gods. So they're also going, doing it to you. And he said, but you know what I want you to do, Samuel? I want you to obey what they're asking for. I want you to tell them exactly how the king is going to treat them, treat their sons and daughters, treat their property and possession. And after you have told them all of that, Let's see what they say. And this is our text this morning. So in our text this morning, Samuel takes the time beginning at verse 10 to explain to them everything a king was going to do if they allowed a king to rule over them. He, and then he said it. He said, some of you are going to be made slaves. 
The king is going to come and take some of your property. The king is going to take your sons and put them to war. The king is going to take your daughters and make them serve him. The king is going to come take your cattle and your animals and add to his property. And after all of that, Israel says, we want a king because we want to be like other nations. They didn't want to be ruled by judges. And, 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 and let's think about this, right? Israel refused to be ruled by God. And instead they wanted to be ruled by kings because when they looked at the other nations, they seem to be doing better than they were. Y'all ever look at people that don't believe in anything? People that don't believe in God? People that go about their business and they seem to be doing better than you? They seem to be living a prosperous life? They seem to be having a joyous life? And if truth be told, some of us, because I've done it myself, I'm like, but they don't stand for nothing. They don't believe in God. And here I am struggling. Here I am catching hell sometimes. And these people who don't believe in anything but themselves and what they're able to do seems to be doing better than me. And I'm going to extend it a little longer because let's, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. Because then you go to say, well, why I got to believe in God and struggle and suffer? They don't believe in anything and they seem to be doing better than me. What am I doing all of this for? And they look at you saying, mm, you going up in that church and you shouting and praising God and you ain't doing no better than me. As a matter of fact, I'm doing better than you. Y'all ever been in that situation, heard some of those things, thought? some of those things amen i know we all save and sanctified saints but i'm here to tell you that i've had some moments where i had to stop and say god what is going on because so and so over there they seem to be doing really well and i'm over here just struggling what's going on god all right, y'all, we're going to pause right there and I'm going to come back to that because that is exactly the mindset of Israel. They were a young people, a small nation being ruled by a God who had rules and restrictions for them. They had to obey 10 commandments. They had to obey festivals. They had to sacrifice and give offerings. And here you have these other nations that seem to be doing whatever they want to do and they look better and they're more powerful and we want to be like them. And this is what God says. They have rejected me. The one who delivered them out of bondage. The one who parted the Red Sea for them to walk on dry ground and then closed it over their enemies. The one who led them through the wilderness for 40 years and for 40 years, day and night, fed them, clothed them, put sandals on their feet, gave them food to drink. But can we go back to the fact where he said he delivered them out of slavery? He delivered them out of slavery. And after all of that, Israel refused God because they wanted to be like other nation, being ruled by men at that time who taught their people to worship them like they were gods. That's what they rejected God for. And this is what God said in um, Leviticus, in, in, in Deuteronomy, because God already knew ahead of time that there was gonna come a day where Israel was going to turn their back on him. And this is what God said way back to them. He said, I bought you out of Egypt and I delivered you from the power of Egypt and all the kingdoms that wanted to oppress you. But now you have rejected your God who saved you 
from all disasters and all calamities. And now you say, appoint a king over us. Here's a question for all of us to ponder. What aspect of our lives are we rejecting God to be like others? What aspect of our lives are we rejecting God just to be like others? As a believer of Jesus Christ, we will face those who will challenge our faith in God. As I said, there will be those people who do not believe. And when we look at their lives, they may seem to be doing better than us. We look at their material possessions and we say to ourselves, why? Why are those who don't believe doing better than we who believe? Why does my life seem less than theirs, but I have a faith in God? Shouldn't me, the one who believes in God, should not my life be better than theirs? Why? Why does their life seem more prosperous? Why does it seem more rewarding? Why does it seem more fulfilling? And like I said, have you ever asked yourself these things? But just like Israel, there are aspects of our lives where we do not see the benefit of serving God. And those are the times when we make the conscious decision to reject God in that moment and do what we want to do. And sometimes because other folks say, come do it. We may take actions to be just like others so we can fit in. You may have given up some aspects of your life that you know was going to lead you astray from God but you got around some of the same old folks and you started hearing them talk about the same old thing and the next moment you look up, you doing something you know you shouldn't be doing, going somewhere you know you should have been not going, but because of the peer pressure in the moment, you just wanted to fit in. You just wanted for a moment in your life not to have to fall under the restrictions that you may have given yourself. Just for one moment, you just wanted to be like everybody else and just have fun and just fit in and just do some things without worrying that in that moment, you may just be rejecting God. We don't even view it like that. We don't view it like that. We just think, oh, well, I slipped up. Oh, well, I made a mistake. Oh, well, you know, the flesh is weak. But I'm here to tell you that in that moment, your action rejected God. And y'all, I don't have to go down the list. That's y'all personal thing. But you know, there are some moments in your life where you just have to say, God, I'm sorry, because I turned my back on you. I rejected you. I'm sorry. I know exactly what I did. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to wrap it up in frilly. I, you know, God, I turned my back on you, but I'm here. They no longer found value in serving God. They found value in being like the rest of the world around them. But in Leviticus 20 and 26, God said something critical to Israel that in this moment they should have remembered. He said, you are to be holy to me because I, the Lord, am holy. And I have, listen to these words, set you apart from the nations to be my own. He told them back in Leviticus that they were set apart from the other nations to be his own. But what did Israel do under peer pressure of power, wealth, and control? When they looked around, they forgot to of a God that set them apart. That's what the word holy means, y'all, to be set apart. So when you tell people I'm holy, what you're really telling people, I'm set apart. And you are set apart. The minute you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you set yourself apart. You said to God, I am in this world, but I'm not 
of this world. You told God that I'm not going to get along. I'm not going to try to fit in because I have set myself apart because I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the teachings and preachings of Jesus Christ. So when everybody else is about eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, you told me I got to turn the other cheek. When everybody says destroy your enemies, you told me to pray and love my enemies. When you took Christ into your life, you set yourself apart and you no longer fit in. Stop trying to fit in. We are a peculiar, chosen, holy, royal priesthood. We don't fit in. We don't belong. And you know something, brothers and sisters? That's a good thing because some of the nonsense going on in the world, I don't want to fit in to that. God and my young people, if you are on the line listening to me, you were not meant to fit in. God set you apart. So when everybody else is saying yes, if the yes is going to lead you somewhere where the action might be to God as a rejection of him, you got to say no. That is why God said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. He didn't talk about maybe. Some of you, when the pressure comes to fit in, you maybe I will. There is no maybe when it comes to God. He said either you say yes and you stick with it or you say no and you run from it. But there's no wishy-washy in-between play. That means you can't try to fit in with one foot in your faith and the other foot out in the world with no faith. And every now and then you trying to do this skip and hopping act because eventually you're going to stumble and you're going to fall. We don't fit in. We were never meant to be like other people. So when somebody comes up and you and say, you know, girl, you acting kind of funny since you joined that church. Yes, I am because I'm not the same person that you know me to be. They be like, brother, you can't hang with us no more. Well, no, I can't because y'all always trying to lead me astray. Y'all trying to make me do some things and say some things and maybe have some things that God is going to view as as a rejection of him. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have you reject me than God reject me. Amen. In the name of Jesus, imagine making decisions in your life where you reject God. I had to stop the other day because something came into my presence and I tell you, I was almost on the brink. And then I was like, wait a minute, Lisa, wait a minute. Now, you know, you can't do that. Because then you're going to have to go face your maker and you know you soft anyway. And in the blink of an eye, the Holy Spirit going to beat you up, convict you. And the next thing you know, you on your knees lying prostrate talking about God, forgive me. So in that moment, I had to say, I can't reject God. I can't reject God. I just, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. And this is what I'm saying. I don't fit in. I don't fit into that anymore. Maybe years ago I fit it in, but I don't fit into that anymore. And I, I'm not going to make me feel bad. Go do you, boo. But I'm going to go. I'm going to stay right here with my God. I'm going to stay right here with my holy set apart self. And come Sunday morning, I'm going to come preach to God's people with a clean heart and a clean mind because I'm not trying to have to have to be beat up by the Holy Spirit, put on ashes and sackcloth and ask God for forgiveness. Uh-uh, I don't fit in. I ain't never gonna fit in. I ain't going back to fit in because I'm set apart. And that is what it's about. It's okay. Look at yourself today in a mirror somewhere and say, I don't fit in. And then thank God that you don't fit into some of the craziness no more, that you don't fit in into some of the sleepless nights no more, that you don't fit in to some of the persecution and name calling and backbiting and gossiping, all that stuff that you may have tried to be a part of because you wanted to fit in. Today is a good day to shout from the rooftop, 
I don't fit in because my God, who is God, set me apart. I'm holy. If you're going to say you holy, you saying you set apart. I'm sanctified. I am washed in the blood of Jesus. My sins have been washed away. I got holy ghost power and I'm going to reject God. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. I don't fit in. And it's okay because you know where I just might fit in if I stay this course? Do you know where I just might fit in if I run this race? Do you know where I might just fit in if I walk in the ways of the gospel of Jesus Christ? When Jesus comes again, I might just fit in in the kingdom of God, in the presence of God forever and ever and ever so you go on with your bad self oh, you don't have to believe in everything but I'm trying to fit in where I ultimately want to fit in and that is when my savior when Christ cracks the cloud when the trumpet sounds when he sits on the throne as God Almighty, when he looks down and says, Lisa, I'm looking at what you have. Lisa, I'm looking at what you done. That I say, that's the only moment I'm gonna say, Lord, I wanna fit in. Can I fit into your kingdom? Can I get a little spot up in heaven? Can my crown of righteousness fit on my head? That is the ultimate fitting in that I want. So it's okay while you honor my sisters and my brothers, all my people under the sound of this voice, you don't fit in. You were never meant to fit in. You were meant to change and transform. You were meant to become a new creature in Christ where the old things are passed away. You see, the old things were the fitting in things. Now you a new creature. You by yourself among a community that does not fit in because Calvary Fellowship doesn't look like some of the other properties on Bedford Stuyvesant. We not supposed to look like the other property. We supposed to look like a church, a house of God, a, a community of believer that sits on the corner of Herkima and Rochester trying to bring some light into some dark spaces in the life of the community. We are not supposed to be like other churches. We are supposed to be just like the church that God has called us to be for where we are in Bedford Simon. Yesterday I was down at um, fall convocation and you know, there were some big churches that, that needed pastors, St. Luke in Harlem, Bethel Wilmington in, in Delaware. And one of my colleagues was sitting with me and she said, wouldn't you like to pastor one of those churches? I said, no, because I know where I fit in. I fit in right there at Calvary Fellowship, African Methodist Episcopal Church. That's where God put me. That's where I'm set apart at. And that's where I want to be. So I don't want to go no other place where I don't fit in. I ain't going to make myself fit in because if God ain't called me to it, I ain't going to it in the name of Jesus because all them people, they've been scratching their eyes out trying to see who going to get these quote unquote big churches. And I'm like, some of y'all ain't even going to fit there, but y'all going to try if the bishop called your name. What I'm saying is, no, and when you look around you, where you are planted is where God has set you apart to be. Where he's taken you is where he has set you apart to be. So don't do it because everybody else does it. Don't say you have to follow the same path because that's the same path everybody else followed. Maybe your path is going to be set apart because by the time God gets you there, you ain't going to give nobody else the glory but God in the name of Jesus. So today, I just want you to understand you are not meant to fit in. You were set apart because God set himself apart as the one true living God. And as we started off the service, there is none, there is none beside him. 
and there is none beside you, the called out, chosen, peculiar, royal, and set apart nation of God. And if you didn't know you was all that, that's what you were set apart to be in the name of Jesus. You are more than Paula. You are more than Lisette. You are more than Evangelist Morrison. You are a called out, chosen, set apart, royal priesthood who God says you belong to him. We don't, we don't fit in. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning.